All right, so this is kind of a part two. And again, I apologize if this video skips any. This is going to be a part two to the question I was answering yesterday over really about wide stops. And how do you recognize when a, break, when a breakout is actually going to be successful versus when it's going to be a failed breakout and lead to more of a trading range? As the old saying goes, if you want to know what's to the right of the chart, look to the left. So, anyways, this person who was asking questions about using a wide stop and reading when a breakout will be successful or when it will fail, he, this person had a follow-up question, and his response was, what I, what I understand, he understands that it mainly depends on the follow through, which he's right. And he brought up two examples this person did <coughs> about one second. Yeah, so this person, <coughs> he made a screenshot of two charts and on well, the first one, he said, he's asking if these false breakouts within a trading range, could they be a vacuum test of support or resistance? And this person gave me this, and he's saying, so if you were long during this blue channel, expecting a retest of the high, would you have gotten stopped out on the spot quite even, but you were still even though you were still in the channel. Okay, so I see what he's saying. So what he is saying is if you were long in here, you know, and you think price is going to go up, and then you exit on the spike right at the low of the channel. And that is really, that has to do with the market cycle. So there's a few ways to handle that. <clears throat> Number one, if you were long and you exited on this bar, thinking, okay, strong enough breakout for a second leg, there's your first leg, you pulled back and you got your second leg. Well, you gotta get long, gotta look to get long again. Second, you have to wonder <clears throat> you know, where's your stop? If you're long here, are you gonna put your stop right here? You might. And so this is kind of a skunk stop. And what that is, is a skunk stop is, I mean, that really the whole reason we call it a skunk stop is because if you stand in the middle of the road, you're bound to get hit one way or the other. So you might as well be on the left side of the road or the right side of the road. Really, though, the saying is a skunk in the road is bound to get hit. And that applies a lot to trading. And really, there's an extreme on everything. And being in the middle is usually the worst thing you can do. For example, you have low probability trades and high probability trades. Let's say low probability trades are 40%, high probability trades are 60% higher. Well, very often you're better off taking some sort of you're better off taking one extreme or the other so you're better off taking a low probability trade or a higher probability trade and that's not to say in most cases there are exceptions what this applies to is stop so I would really hand, I would kind of let me zoom in a little so you can see this better there's two there's kind of two ways you handle this trade, in my opinion. If you're long, which at this point, pretty tight channel, and dollar yen. You know what? I know what day this is. So let me. So here's Trade Station, and here is this person's example. So as you can see, fair channel. Here's the high. And. We broke above this high. So 
So this person is asking, if I'm long here, betting that we get up here, and then this happens. What do I do? Well, two things. Number one, the single most important thing is context. As I just said earlier, if you want to know what's going to happen after this bear bar, look to the left. Bear bar, bad follow through. So anyways, but real quick, back to stops. It's context. Context is what matters most. When I look at this channel, if I'm long, let me first, let me go back to the skunk stops. There's two types of stops. You have a tight stop, which would be either this low, maybe here, low probability. And then you have the wide stop. What's wide? Minimum, probably down here. Or wider. Here's the problem with the wide stop. And here's the problem with a big channel. You may get a pullback. This is a 50%. From this low, here's the start of the channel to this high, top of the channel. Here's 50%. I'm gonna make it blue. We could easily come down to this line and stop and turn up. So that's kind of the issue. <clears throat> If I was long here, which I would not be, because of a couple reasons. Number one, at this moment, I think the odds are good that we're going to fall below here. Maybe below here. Prob I'm less certain that we'll fall below here. I'm more than 60%. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm more than 60%. Excuse me. <clears throat> I can barely speak right now. I'm more than 60% certain we'll fall below here. Why am I saying that? Because I was showing it on the euro dollar today, the daily chart. So we've been channeling up, strong breakout, late in the trend. Here's a higher low, weak rally, we pulled back. If you were listening to Al through here, he was saying that he thinks we're going to fall below here. But whether or not we get above this high. And the reason he was saying that is for the same exact reason I'm saying right here will probably fall below the slope and that is it's a bad stop location trading range days they gun stops and the reason they gun stops is because traders do not put stops in obvious locations like that you know here strong breakout and it's, it's common for people to say, you know, strong breakout. Okay. We had this. Now we went sideways. We got a new high. I can put my stop in here. No. Well, and then we get this. Now, it's reasonable. I mean, I'll, I'll, I would say, I mean, if I was long here, I'd probably put my stop here at this moment. Because three or four more days. But then I see this bar. And that's when I'm thinking, now wait a minute. Three pushes up. Is this really going to be a successful breakout of this trading range that we've had right here? Or is this going to be a failed breakout and 50 50 chance we got under here? Why 50 50? Because I think we'll test down. So two, I have two choices. I'm either going to exit the trade below here, which I probably would, or. He's somewhere down here. Just right here. There's too much risk to go down to here and turn up. And look what happened. Uh, would I have been stopped out? Well, maybe. Hindsight, I wouldn't have. But I might have. So let's go back to your question. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy here. If I was long, which I wouldn't be. I think we're going to fall below. I think we're going to fall lower. And if I'm, if anything, I have, I'd have a stop down here. And my issue with this entire trade is what's your goal? Are you buying, betting that we get up to here? Well, okay. So your target's here. Your entry is somewhere, let's assume, in the middle. One to one risk reward. You could have your stop down here. Well, two, th two problems. 
All right, I apologize. I I thought we were this video was recording. I had to stop it for a minute, and it was not recording. So I really do not remember where I was, but I'm gonna kind of review. So he gave me an example. This person's asking, okay, I'm long in here. Where do I get out? And where's my stop? Do I get out here? Do I get stopped down here? Do I get out below here? And I get his question. His question's really, okay, well, if I get out on this bare breakout, we're at the bottom of the channel, and then we may test out. So I'm, I'm getting out. That's a skunk stop. And as I just said, a skunk stop is doing something in the middle. The reason it's called a skunk stop is because a skunk in the road is bound to get hit. So, you know, look at this. You have big up, big down. But really, look big big channel up so if you are exiting down here you have to understand this is a <clears throat> here's a 50% pullback and the reality is <clears throat> if you're long in here this is where the this is where you gave me your chart get you this sideways and my only problem with being long in here is the range is is about six pips past hour. Do you really want to be long right here? It's breakout mode. 50-50 we go up, 50-50 we go down. Now, when you apply context, it's a little different. If I'm going to be long, my stop's down here. I'm not putting a stop here, and that's that. I would rather, I'd rather not even have a stop here. I'd rather have a wider stop. So, really, I think it's better if you can scale in. If you're going to be long, maybe put a stop down here. You see the bear break out. You say, okay, if the bears get one more bar, I'll exit. They don't. And you get a second leg down. You look to buy more. So, this is a tight channel. Again, the pullback. So, and another, and another, think about it this way. Let's take the bear's perspective. Let's say a bear sold this close, and they sell this close to here. The one to one risk rewards here. What are the odds price gets down to here? Well, I mean it's decent. Uh, I think it maybe 50-50 at this point. The bears really need follow through. Well, look, they don't get follow through. So now I think the odds are a lot less that we get down here. That tells me shorting here, stop up here, is not a good strategy. Because if that means for, it's not a 60% trade. I do not think you can get a one-to-one -one risk reward. Remember, trading's about math. It's about probabilities. It's about risk reward. You know the risk, you know the reward. And when you use both with context, you can structure probability. So, you know, I, I wouldn't take it. I get the argument, well, sure, I'll just, I'll put my stop here, I'll sell, and I'll go for twice my reward. Do you really think the price is going to get down here if you sell here? No. So, it's not a good trade. I would rather buy here, set a target here, put my stop down here. What about saying, okay, I will, uh, I'll sell here, put my stop up here, and set a target down here. Again, I don't think it's a good trade. I think the math's bad. I think the math is better for a trader buying stop down here, target up here. Why? Because this is probably a bull, a bear leg in a trading range. After a tight channel, the market usually evolves to a trading range, usually stalls around 50%. And the first, this is tight enough, the first reversal down is probably going to fail. Here was more reasonable than selling down here. And we've been going down for a few hours, best looking bear bars, no follow through. This is probably exhaustion. Same thing up here. Bulls who bought, they're disappointed, as I think I said in yesterday's video. I don't want to be repeating this example or not. Bulls buy, stop down here, very disappointed. Most probably scaled in if they were holding.
and price gets back up. Well, what are they going to do? If you bought here, let's say you bought here, right? And then you check the volume. Or you're saying, boy, this is a great trade. I wish I took it. I'm so glad I took this trade. Or you're thinking, well, gee, this is disappointing. You know, I here I am. I bought, and I had to sit through a pullback of many, many hours, and I bought the high tick. You're disappointed. Disappointment and confusion is the hallmark of a trading range. Look at this. Let's say you sold this trade. Are you thinking over here, gee, this is such a strong breakout. I need to sell more. Or are you thinking, well, I don't know. We had that follow through. Many, many dojis. You know, where's the rush? Where's the eagerness to sell? You know, you trade breakouts because you're expecting fast movement. A fast reward. So over here, ask yourself, ask yourself, <clears throat> ask yourself the same question. I'm long. Stop down here. What are the odds I get a one to one score? If I buy here, stop down here. Remember, even if you bought here, and price is up here, if you're in this trade, that's no different from buying here. Versus buying, buying, versus buying above this bar. Your entry is irrelevant. What matters is where does everybody get out of the trade? Out of the trade. Excuse me, where does everyone exit the trade? So at this moment, when I see this tail, I don't think that the risk, I don't think the probability is 60% that the bulls will make a one to one. I don't believe we're going to get up to here. So, Next, what are the odds that the bears who sell here, stop up here, will get down to here? And I don't know. It's I don't know if it's even I don't know if that's sixty percent. But I do know that the odds of price going down before they go much up here is better for the bears. Therefore, I want to be short. Well, I, let me restructure that. I don't want to be long. So I'm getting out below this bar. You know. In a strong, in a strong, strong breakout, such as here, you need let you don't need you need a the bears need to do a whole lot to convince traders to sell. So even though we went sideways, this might you know the bulls were exhausted. They want to wait ten bars, two legs. They want to see what the bears can do. Maybe they want to get test the moving average. Many traders are very confident we'll get a second leg after any pullback. This the bears made it go sideways, which is great, but they couldn't do anything. Over here, strong bull breakout. Is this a breakout within a new leg, or is this just a vacuum up to resistance? Remember, a breakout and a vacuum can basically be the same thing. <clears throat> well, sort of. Really, they're really, well, I don't want to confuse traders. No, really, for, for the sake of keeping things simple, they're not really the same. Let's just make it that. This is a vacuum up to resistance. This breakout is just it's a breakout vacuuming up to the next support. Now, you have to understand, though, technically a breakout and a vacuum are the same thing, since both are vacuuming up to something. It, when you get a breakout, it's price searching for the next support level or the next resistance level. What you have to understand, though, is, yes, in a way, this, this is a breakout. In a way, it's a vacuum, because it's everybody realizing we need to go higher. Now, the problem with that you have to be careful with thinking that way because it may be racing up to a vacuum that's all the way up here somewhere. You know, this is just telling everyone the market needs to go higher and it's going to probe down, find buyers, probe down, find buyers, probe down, find buyers. The market's constantly probing up and down. And because of that, when it sells off, bulls buy. When it sells off, bulls buy. You know, think about... When you're, when you're in a big trading range such as this, 
Well, I don't want to use that because I'm about to use that in a different way. You're in a big trading range such as this. The market probes down a whole lot, finds buyers, goes back up. Probes up, no buyers, sells off hard. So over here, strong breakout. Everyone knows the market's going higher, most likely. So they're going to buy every pullback. Here, this is just a strong vacuum up. I hope that makes sense. Let's look at another example that this person has. And this is more of a one I want to talk about. So, and this is the Euro dollar, what time? Yeah, this is a 60 minute chart. I was looking at this. So this person says, I know that stops, stop losses or stop limits in, in this question, he says, I know that stops are to protect you from the market, but many times they just, <clears throat> let me reword this. I know that stops are in, I know we place stops to protect ourselves from the market, but many times the stop placements are where it's even more likely to turn if price gets there. So what, is he, what he means is, he's basically saying if I sell here, if I sell here, my stop's up here, and I get stopped out and price turns down. Well, let me explain that in a different way, in just a minute. Let's say you enter the, in many states, this person says, let's say that you enter right on the low as you think, it should follow through for a measure move in the future. Huge bear breakout, I'm gonna just sell the low, confident we're gonna get a measure move down. That's, that's this person's thinking. That's what this person is thinking right now. And he says, your stop is right at the top of this big, right at the top up here. You could probably put it up here. Uh, I wouldn't, but I would even recommend it. Right up here, high probability of making money. Maybe you hold and think of scaling it higher below a bear bar. Oh, okay, I see what he's saying. So he's basically saying, sell, stop up here. Maybe you sell below this bar betting that price will at least test back down if it goes away from you. Do you hold until your stop is touched and then turn? And then he says you end up holding until your stop is Yes. This is a classic question of buying high and selling low in a trading range. So, as I said, a breakout and a vacuum are pretty much the same thing, in a way. I look at this chart, I'm thinking big bear bar. I'm thinking, wow, this bar is big. We're probably going lower, which we are, and you can there's nothing wrong with selling this bar. But then you see the next bar, a one or two pip body. And then you're thinking, huh. You know, gee, I'm kind of disappointed. I wanted a bit another big bar. We didn't get it. Then another bar, tail, another bar. And then I'm thinking after three bars down right here, I'm thinking, hmm. Why are traders buying, you know, why are bears scaling out? Why are bears are scalping out at the lows of every bar and bulls are buying? Wait a minute, they shouldn't do that if it's a strong trend. So then, hmm, I have to think, is my premise wrong? Is this not a strong breakout? Is this a vacuum? And then look, <clears throat> bad follow through. Three pushes down. Here, I've got to be concerned. Three bars up, four bars up, <clears throat> probably a second leg up. Look, you got to understand, no matter what you do, any trade you take, every trade has a premise. And if your premise is wrong, you exit the trade. You don't hold until your stops appear. Many traders will not put a stop up here. Many traders, their stops here. And they're waiting to exit. Any trader that puts a stop up here is using a, I mean, that's, if something catastrophic happens, they lose power, they, they have to go to the hospital, you know, there's an emergency, then they will get stopped out. You know, their computer crashes, their platform shuts down, the internet goes off, anything like that. But traders are not going to allow a stop to get hit up here. look at this person's example. I think it was a 60 minute chart. Maybe 
Maybe it was not the euro dollar. No, it was. Well, you know what? It was this one, so it must must have been a two hundred. No, must have been a fifteen minute chart. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking this was a 60-minute chart, but it's a five-minute chart. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So here is where we're at with this person's question. So let me just let me walk you. Let's walk through it. So what do we know right now? What we know is big, big trading range. No idea what's to the left, but... Now we had support down here, we turned up sharply, so we may, yeah, we'll probably turn up down here. Three big bear bars probably going lower, probably gonna close this gap, maybe going down for a measured move. We're high enough in the range that I think more traders are gonna sell than buy. And then battle can stop entry, everybody in the world sold. Now at this particular moment, yes, this is strong. So Couple things. Okay, so double top, measure move down. Here's the measure move target. And my biggest concern is probably, you know, you could draw channels. I think it's kind of irrelevant. You know, sure, somewhere in here, it's kind of irrelevant. So, personally, if I'm long, I mean, I would I would be out of longs right now. I would not be short. Excuse me. I would not be long. If anything, I'd be short. Disappointment, more disappointment. You know, why are bulls buying? Bulls are buying. Then we got another bear breakout. Well, hmm. Could be a parabolic wedge. One, two, three. You know, beyond a measure move, the, the market's pretty climactic. You, have, you always have to wonder when you get a huge, strong bar and then terrible follow-through. It's not terrible follow-through, but it's not great follow-through. So, always in short, a lot of bears will exit. Aggressive bulls will buy. And then, terrible low one short. Of course, bulls will buy it. Now look. So, you know, take it, let's think about this. It's reasonable for bears to get out and or to get out here. If, if the bears were still short, they here's the third attempt up. They're probably going to get out on this attempt. And three consecutive. You got to ask yourself, do you really think that price is going to go, you know, is this a major or minor reversal? Well, I think it's more major than minor. Bad follow through on the downside. And you gotta be suspicious. I don't know if I'd wanna be long up here, but this tells a lot of bulls that right here tells traders, if we make get a new low in the day, we'll probably find out. So we'll probably come back to this price level. So many traders will be thinking about, okay, how do we structure longs? Bears will sell for scalps, second entry, but then you get this, then you get that. Now you got to wonder, should you have sold? You know, this is a strong enough breakout. You'll probably get a second leg up. <clears throat> bulls, bulls made money buying this close and scaling in lower. This is not good. Tight channel. Any pullback will probably find buyers in a major trend reversal. We've gone up for at least 10 bars. Whether or not we go down for 10 bars, you know, I think we're at least in a trading range. So, again, you can say, okay, 50% pullback. Didn't even reach 50% pullback. Bears will. 
that's probably true. They will, but again, tight channel. You know, this is kind of one of those, hmm. This could have trapped a lot of traders on the wrong side. Now look. So let's say you took that short. It's a reasonable sell. Nothing wrong with it. Good follow through. Then terrible follow through. So bear bar, bull bar. Bear bar, bull bar. Bull bar closing on its high. If I sold, I'm getting out. No question. And I think a lot of bulls will buy. So it's reasonable to buy in here. A lot of bulls will get out. It's a bull break out of a small channel. A lot will get out. Then they got to re-enter. Then look. This bar. Darn. You know. So. You've got to ask yourself. You know, the problem with this, well, let me finish. You know, you're saying, it's clearly always in long, clearly good follow through, we're probably going higher. And we did it now, I'd get out below that bar. The reason I'd get out below that bar is, sell counter, buy counter. Rally, pull back, rally, pull back, even bigger rally. Odd, odds are our second leg, we got our second leg. Pretty strong reversal, we went above this high, starting to turn down. Better to get out and look to buy a pullback. Three, three bars down, four bars down. I'm only interested in shorts. So if anything, I'm selling stop up here. And we reverse back. So, okay. This, again. I want to take this position of correct. Break out. Down the channel down. Look where this breakout happened. Strong vacuum down to here. That's why it helps to look at higher time frames. But you don't have to see that. I'm afraid by looking at that, I don't want to confuse people more. So when you sell this close, ask yourself, where's my stop? Okay. Let's say my stop's up here, I sold. Odds are I'll get a measured move. Sure, that, that may be true. The odds may in fact be that you will get a sell. However, when you get the bad follow through, at this point, you're not gonna get a you're not getting a measure move down most likely. At this point, you're definitely not getting a measured move. So if anything, if I'm playing the measured move game of who's going to get a one-to-one, -one, I'm buying, and I'm going to get my stop way down here. Now I'm not actually going to do that, but that would be my mode of thinking. Then when we get this, I'm thinking, yeah, probably a trading range. And that was a surprise. So, again... You know, this is really, if you take any trade, we're always in short, let's say you're short. Well, if the market becomes always in long, it doesn't matter why you sold, it doesn't matter if you want to scale in. You got to get out. Here, you got to get out. You know, the market's not, it's not always in short. Tight enough channel that, sure, if you sell, but you got to be prepared for this. And you're, you'll be better off. You know, I'd rather a trader not. If you cannot sell here, then reverse to long here. I would rather wait to buy and look to buy instead of short. If that's a higher probability. Here, why was why did this happen? Well, because yes, you don't want to sell, put your stop up here, get stopped out. However. Many traders, I am not one of them, will they sell, and maybe they sell more below this bar. And I'm just trying to think of a few ways. I, I don't think they would do that, actually. I'm going to take that back. Maybe they sell anywhere. Maybe they sell the high of this bar. 
whole point is many traders will not get out here and if anything they're going to sell more so traders they sell in anywhere in here they sell more here and they get out back down here in fact that tells me a lot of traders did that so many traders and this is a i would not recommend traders starting out doing this many traders would sell right here and maybe they'll go for a measured move and they say okay there's a I don't know maybe there's a 50 50 chance that price may get up here so I'm not gonna put my stop here I'm gonna sell more here and I'll put my stop all the way up here well, they will make money now personally if I'm selling I'm getting out here worst case here And I'm going to move on. And move on to the next trade. So, this is about really uh, not buying high and not selling low in a trading range. So, I hope this video helps. It's really, it's the same thing over here. Where I'm getting at is when it's logical to do something. It's very reasonable to take this short. It is. Reasonable, well, let me start with this one. It's reasonable to sell here. So anybody who sells, sells more up here, they'll probably get out at their first entry. Now, I don't know the stop they're using, but the stop's way up here. It's not at this high. Trader who buys here or buys here. Well, this is kind of that same thing. In a trading range, let me start off by saying this. Very often you can buy in a trading range, but you have to be understand. Usually the obvious stop will get hit. Obvious stop is here. Well, it got hit. Traders sell. The weak bears get stopped out. The smart bears sell more. And they either get out break even over here or they make profit on their second break even on the Trader who buys up here, guess what? Their stop somewhere down here. You know, I don't think they're putting it. You know, they're not going to put it here because one, in my opinion, and again, I would, I would not trade this way. There's a logical target here, so I'm putting my stop way down. Go buy, buy more below these bars. Scalp out over here happens all the time and that is because in a trading range you can be just reasonable and make money so find another example in this example and I, I really don't like to do that uh, it's a lot of risk and the reward's not fantastic. So I try to keep things more simple. Anyways, I hope this helps. Again, look to the left. Study the market cycle. Study Al's video, of course. And thanks for All right, hope everyone has a good day. Thanks.